Hey Libra Seeker! How's it going? Welcome back to the Existential Shift. Are you new? In that case, my name is Morgan. So I'm actually recording this on my birthday. The moon is now in Libra and my moon is in Libra and it's my birthday. So look at that. Hey! I'll be using the Dragon's Tarot. I just love your energy right now. I was like, what is the energy I'd like to hang out right now in my head? It's like, well, first of all, the energy that is in harmony with my head, my moon sign, Libra. And second of all, just objectively, you feel calm. Maybe I'm projecting my good mood onto you. Or maybe there's a reason for me to do so. Either way, we're feeling good right now in this space. Whatever happened a second earlier before you press play, whatever may happen afterwards. This is a sacred space. This is a safe space where you can truly be who you are, Libra. And I'm happy to accommodate that for you because you always give that to others, right? You always know exactly what someone needs to feel calm and at ease. Even when you are imbalanced or worried or anxious or confused, even if you can't recognize within yourself what you need, you manage to somehow recognize what the person in front of you needs, like that. And you just have this gift. You're like a wizard with making people feel good about themselves. It's not fake and politically correct. It's kind. It's sweet. It takes a lot of energy to do that. And it's selfless. I mean, nothing is selfless in a way. Everything we put out there, the way we make other people feel, returns to us and uplifts us as well, right? It's all one cycle. And if you're a projection of me, then by making you feel good, then I feel good, and so on and so on. But in the 3D polar definition of the moral code, you're selfless. You like what I did there? Managed to compliment you, yet put a little bit of a flashlight on the shadow aspect of things. That's what you do so very well. You manage to point out to people what goes on in their heart and in their mind with truth but still make them feel great about it. You have a gift, Libra. Be proud of it. Flaunt it. Use it. Enjoy it. Don't let anyone make you feel otherwise. Okay, Tarot. Oh, no. Okay, I no too many too many cards. Like half the deck just fell. Put them back. You know what? Two car a lot of cards fell on the ground, but two cards fell on the table. Ooh, the Hermit and Six of Cups. So there is a sense of going within um, to something from your past. This could be Pluto now retrograding, making us go really deep within into our darkest, most skeleton-like closets. And dig. And like I said, put a flashlight, put a light onto something nostalgic. It could be your childhood, it could be a past relationship, it could be your hometown where you grew up. If you're not going there with body, you're going there with spirit. The Hermit is a card of a journey, an inner journey that is timeless. Even though it's Cronus, the god of time, ironically, it's actually timeless. Because if time is infinite, then time also doesn't exist. It happens simultaneously in a parallel way. The past, the present, the future happening at once in different state of consciousness. OK? 
okay? So if this was a sci-fi movie, you would see different aspects of yourself, one from your past, one from your present, one from your future, living their life, and we would jump from one frame to another and just see the narratives. But if we go into the actual experience of life, the way the mind works, think about it, right? You have your memories, your past. You have your plans, your future. And you have your current present experience. And it's all happening simultaneously within you. I wonder why it took us there. To the aspect of infinite time versus timeless. You realize that the past is still being carried by you. It's still inside of you. And even though it feels like it's been eternity since, it's, it also feels like it just happened. Like, like running into an old friend you haven't seen in decades and talking like you just met. And just picking up from where you left off. It's a, it's a coming home type of feeling. After feeling alone for a very long time, suddenly feeling at home suddenly, but it's not really sudden, is it? Because you realize that everything that is making you now feel at home, feel belong, was there all along. It's just that you didn't experience that reality because you were busy with the other realities, with other timelines, with other narratives, with other situations, with other aspects of your life and of your heart and of your spirit and of your mind. And there it is, just in the right time, in the right way. It's like, hey, I was here all along. This feeling. If it sounds poetic, but not exactly hitting home, watch this reading two, three weeks from now. My readings tend to be like, sometimes, if you're new, where it all sounds like it makes sense, but it's hard to kind of point it out. You feel drawn to it. You know it, you know it, you know it resonates with you, but wait, how exactly within my life but then as the time passes, as you go into May, this reading for this, is for this next month of May, right? Um, and things happen and plot unfolds. And then you watch it again and it makes sharp sense. I get that a lot for my seekers. So I started recommending it for viewers. And it seems to be then hitting home. So it might hit home today. And if not... Come back two, three weeks from now. Let's move on for Libra. Oh, it's the second time half the deck drops. What is happening? Show me more, please, for Libra. For this coming month. Okay. Knight of Swords. So there's some sort of journey that you want to take that has a mission behind it, that has purpose to it. You want to say something. You want to convey a message. It's based off what you learn. It's based off what you know. And you feel like it's somewhat of a mission for you. put it out there but tell me more about this Knight of Swords there's something missing tell me more about this Knight of Swords for Libra another six six of Pentacles
and Nine of Swords and the Hierophant. Okay, let me look at this. I feel like you're going about doing you and that triggers some people around you Libra other people or someone um, your generosity and kindness and ease somehow triggers someone's anger it's how do I explain it's like how dare you be how dare you be so poised and calm maybe you're facing a situation that is um, stressful or challenging and you respond to it throughout the month at one point you respond to it super calm and collected and balanced and you're really able to deal with what is happening and someone around you is getting really stressed out or freaked out or they don't know how to deal with it and watching you being the way you're being like instead of taking it as the situation that it is where you simply can handle something that they can't you're sim you simply can handle something that they can't they turn it around to make it seem like there's something wrong with you Like there's something lacking with your understanding of the situation. And you're like, no, I understand the situation perfectly well. I just know how to deal with it without freaking out. Because I'm Libra and I'm awesome. And they are not Libra and awesome. <laughs> they are triggered by it. It comes from a place that... Okay, this is someone who constantly tries to act to do things by the book um, the way it's expected to the way it's supposed to but the their approach and actions and response to things that come from that place doesn't come from their inside so they do the uh, the book guidance of how to deal with a scenario or a situation but you understand that okay life is not truth is not black and white it's a little bit more complex than that and this scenario requires a, a little bit of a different type of dealing and of handling and you're more more fluid with it which which works better it actually manages to resolve a situation um, and to them it's like well you shouldn't have done it that way and you're like but it worked and it helped and everything's okay now so I guess maybe I should have and they're like no but that's not how you're supposed to do things and you're like well I don't care cross watchers don't be jealous of Libra and if you are jealous of Libra, learn from them. Instead of being spiteful to them. Now, not all cross watchers are like that. Some of you are confused by Libra. Not confused, more should I say curious, because Libra's head is something is in something meaningful and deep for them. And so they're not entirely laser focused on you or on love specifically or or anything in particular that is like I don't want to say mundane because love is anything but mundane but they're just they're not putting too much emphasis or energy on overthinking or worrying they're just two sixes here that with the hermit that it shows me a, um, a good mental balance which is not easy for a Libra to attain Libra is the sign of balance yeah but the signs are of what they are of in ways of aspiration and spiritual um, 
growth towards, okay? So Libra is meant to achieve balance and bring balance, but the way to balance goes through the pendulum effect of imbalance. So many Libras are feeling really imbalanced, and that's it's very hard for them to make a decision because they see both sides of the coin, and so they can sometimes be a little bit fickle and not hard for them to make a decision, but it doesn't come from a place of not wanting balance or being in balance, the opposite. They want everything to be balanced, which makes them behave imbalanced, ironically enough. So I wouldn't take it personally, Cross Watcher, um, unless you're the ass that makes them feel like shit for being awesome. And then like, what, do, what are you doing? So back to Libra. There's also a sense of feeling like a little bit held by social expectations or some sort of system that might be a bit rigid. And like, you just want to look at this dragon tied. This is not a great Hierophant card uh, in, this, in the dragon tarot. Um, because the Hierophant can be a wonderful card, but here it really brings out the uh, corrupt aspect of um, of the structure, right? The religious dogma. Um, this dragon here is meant to be free and wild and, you know, burn shit down. <laughs> but it's uh, shackled and imprisoned. It's like your inner wild beast, your truth, truest instincts and essence can't really express themselves because of a system of some sort. You can break out of this uh, prison by Ten of Swords, so Nine of Swords, then the Hierophant, then Ten of Swords. So you can end this, speaking of Ten of Swords, by completely surrendering to it. Say so what now? Okay. Take a breath. To experience freedom in this world of polarity, we first experience imprisonment. To truly know what freedom is, to truly honor it and appreciate it. If you go through a type of imprisonment or um, limitations, then your understanding of freedom is way more grandiose and true. Something is trying to get you to a point of extreme freedom. Your spirit is trying and life is trying to liberate you from any restraints, mind restraints. You know, the, 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 the mind is a beautiful servant but a dangerous master kind of thing. So in order to get you to a place where you never, ever, ever again settle for your freedom, it's trying to, you know, you don't hear it in the whisper, you hear it in the shout, I say it a lot. It's trying to kind of push you to an extreme experience of enshacklement and imprisonment. And once that really sinks in, and once that frustration and pain of it clicks, after that, you will never ever again put yourself in a situation where that can happen to you. You would never give your power away like that. You would never sacrifice your freedom for anyone like that because Libra, you sometimes do that for the sake of harmony, right? And keeping things afloat and keeping things calm and cool and collected and serene. You sacrifice yourself a lot. You're like, okay, 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 let's just not argue. Okay, wh whatever you say, right? So it's trying to teach you to find balance and harmony not from a place of self-sacrifice because that's not harmony harmony and balance is symbiosa of two matters it's the alchemy of two um 
two things. So if you cancel yourself, you can't really achieve harmony because the other thing can't really merge with you because you're not there. It just emerges with itself with the illusion of merging with you because physically you're there, but your essence is not. So in order for you to truly achieve balance and harmony and unity, you got to be a part of it. The equation needs the um, mishtanim, mishtane, the, uh, I don't know how to say it in English. The equation needs the different aspects within the equation in order to be an equation. I hope that makes sense. In Hebrew, I could say it and sound smarter. <laughs> um, so this experience might be uncomfortable. It will be a result of you somehow in the past or recently or really soon, I hope, I don't know, of you giving your power to someone in a way in order to achieve serenity. And it will bring you to a place that is really uncomfortable and you're like, what? No, never again. So once you get to that place, as I, I started this rant, surrender, be like, okay, this is to my highest good because it's teaching me where I should never ever go to again and what not to do in order to achieve balance because if that's what I did to achieve balance and was completely sacrificed on the altar for it, I'm not saying you're going to be sacrificed on the altar, you know what I mean, then lesson truly be learned when we were through this. And then that lesson will end. And then, and then you'll truly be free to do the work that you want to do. Boom. But what about love? If it will come now in the next few cards, I will talk about it regardless. If it will come in this reading or not. The extended for this month is a double pentagram special love reading. It's a look into you and your person of interest. Um, whether you're in a relationship, a situation ship, a, uh, an ex ship, or a future ship, it will pick up on the person it needs to pick up on for you to know what you need to know. Okay, it's in the description box. You can find it on Vimeo uh, for a separate purchase, or you can find all the extendeds for unlimited streaming for this month and past months on my Patreon. And there's tons of other lovely VIP content like daily uh, rune messages, which after this I will do uh, for my Patreon this weekly rune messages. Hey, patrons, if you're here. Um, and there's also lunar love readings and occasional VIP goodies. Uh, it's just, you know, joining my community. So I'd love to see you there. You can check it out. All the fun stuff are below. Um, and if you want to learn how I read tarot, I created an entire tarot masterclass, Bunkai, for the secrets of tarot, to beginner tarotchis, towards professional tarotchis, or simply existential shifters who want to go through a shamanic spiritual journey learning from me. Uh, it's 90 pre-recorded classes, so it's really uh, wholesome and intensive and intense. Check it out. It's also on Vimeo. Okay. Let's keep going. Oh, I'll finish up with Animal Spirit, so stay tuned here on this reading. And over there in the extended, I also give messages from the Celtic runes. Any Druids out there? Any Merlins and Morgane Le Fays? Any Knights of a Round Table? I love, I love the stories of Camelot and Avalon. Avalon is waking up soon. Maybe I'll do a video about it when, when it fully clicks and I'm ready. But this decade, the 2020s, symbolizes the shift, the existential shift. It's going to be wild. If you think what we've had thus far is wild, oh, just really buckle up. This is not over. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just saying, you know, the massive change that we're undergoing, that this earth is undergoing, that humanity is undergoing. As much as we went through in just, what, five, six months of 2020? Don't worry, Wiz. 
you're gonna be okay. So the tornado will swirl and the earth will split and the tsunami will flow. It's the circle of life, ain't it? In order for one thing to rise, another needs to... It's a repetition of what happened with Atlantis. If you want to know what we're going through now, read about the fall of Atlantis. It's a story that repeats itself in history and in cultures. The story of Noah's Ark, Judaism, for example. Like It, it, it repeats itself. I'm not foreseeing an Armageddon, but I am foreseeing what many others have been foreseeing as well. Uh, one hell of a ride. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, more for Libra, please. Okay. Queen of Swords. Libra. Look at this, like, unharnessed dragon that doesn't know what it's trying to say, but it feels like it has a lot to say, so it's all over the place. And then look at this here. Look at the mastery over the realm of the mind and of philosophy and of spirituality that this queen has with her instincts and with the instincts of the world. Something about the full moon in Scorpio, although this is an air energy, but still the full moon that is approaching is in Scorpio. Something about that energy will be the finalization of what I just spoke of for you. And you will um, gain your reign. Libra. You will reach that point where it clicks. Your mental balance, spiritual balance, philosophical balance clicks. I'm not saying perception, Yoda, perfection, I'm sorry, or Yoda, or uh, I don't know, guru kind of thing. I don't like to go to that uh, megalomaniac place. But I am saying you're reaching a level where you feel comfortable in your knowing to a level where you've already proved you can convey your knowledge and it will work or people will respond to it properly. And now we have the seven of cups. We had the six of cups at the beginning. Now we go to the seven of cups. So seven of cups with the queen of swords, it's pretty awesome because seven of cups can have the you know, the whole illusion, delusion, detached, dream space, um, too many options, not even one actually being manifested, um, vibe to it, but not here. Here, it's being really discerning and seeing clearly the possibilities and the options that stand before you and making a plan. You're making a plan in regards to an aspiration that you have or opportunity that you have or maybe more than one opportunity as to how to bring it about for manifestation, to materialize. It's planning the dream. It's knowing what you have to work with. what can realistically click and what cannot. And during this month, you'll be kind of looking at these things and like, okay, which one do I focus on now? The High Priestess. You're on a roll, Libra, going from the Queen of Swords to the High Priestess. And speaking of Camelot, um, when every time I have the um, Hermit and the High Priestess together in a reading, I immediately go to Merlin and Morgane Le Fay, the archetype of... Uh, teaching the occult of mentoring someone in your footsteps 
giving knowledge like um, from one generation to another, from one occultist to another, the secrets of life, right? The ancient wisdoms that go with, you know, with storytelling from one generation to another. So you're either teaching someone or finding someone that teaches you, that takes you to that next level. But you're diving really, really, once you overcome this very important lesson and experience that I described of like, I will never feel like this again and I will never give my power or my freedom just like that to anyone. Once you honor your wisdom, once you honor your path, once you honor your knowledge, once you honor your abilities, you can't possibly sacrifice them because once you learn to truly appreciate what you have and what you know, it's inevitable that you will like, uh, no, I'm not just giving that to you. What did you do to deserve it? Did you go through the initiate initiation? Because I went through initiation. I went through a lifetime or even lifetimes of initiation. I was burned on stake. I was um, enslaved in a prison with shackles. I served masters. I dug in the dirt. I traveled far and wide. I've studied the books. I've studied man and woman and the beast. And that's how I have gained my reign and my knowledge. And now you just come at me and like, you want me to give it to you? This isn't about me being a giver or not being a giver. This isn't about generosity or being a cheap ass. This is about truly honoring the path that you took and the knowledge that you've attained. You don't even have to honor yourself to be discerning like that. But honor what you know. And then the next time you encounter an opportunity to either give your power or allow someone to actually earn it, thus being able to handle that. You're not being kind when you just tell people the truth or what they need to do. No, you're, you're, you're spiraling them into a very dangerous spiral. Because if they can't deal with it, or if they don't understand it, or if they don't know what to do with it, they're going to get hurt. You don't put a newborn on a bicycle and expect it to ride it without falling and getting hurt. You don't teach physics to someone who doesn't know how to add numbers. Not because they're, they don't deserve, it's because they, they won't know what to do with it or how. It's not fair to them. Oh, so they're, they're crying about it like a baby? Oh well. True kindness is looking at the person, recognizing what do they truly need, not what they want. We all want. What do they need? And how can they handle this thing that they need? And this is something the high priestess knows how to do. She's beyond cognitive reason. She's beyond emotional empathy. She's beyond physical um, endurance. She's beyond religious godly faith. She's so far beyond these things. She's simply inside. I once did a 13th element a long time ago. 3455. I will put it here in the information. Um, the electric spark of the heart. That's where I believe the soul lies. The heart beats, right? It pumps blood into all the organs in the system, right? It works in a cycle. 
And the cycle operates because it beats. We know that. Do you know what makes the heart beat? There's an electric spark, buzz, really, really tiny inside the heart that makes it beat. Now, we know of that spark. We still don't know the origin. How, where does the spark get its energy from? What makes it pump the heart? Beat the heart so the heart pumps the, the organs in the blood. Yeah, you can search. I mean, I don't know if Google will find it right away. Like, when I say these things, like, I don't just, like, say things. I've done my research. I've studied. It's real. Check out that uh, 13th element. I think you, you might like it. I believe it's where the soul lies and also in the... Um, third eyes of pineal gland. And in the ha in the center. No, anyway, I'm not I'm not gonna over dive into into it, but watch that video. I think you'll like it. A couple more cards and then we'll move on to the animal spirit and then we'll do your love reading. For Libra please for the month of May or whenever you're guided to watch this. Eight of Swords. I'm tapping into someone who used to, who once in a past lifetime or in this lifetime was either imprisoned or punished for their knowledge or for speaking out their knowledge. The first thing that comes to mind is the Inquisition and the witch hunt, right? I don't know if you know this, but in a duration of three to four hundred years or so, they burned, tortured, slaughtered nine million witches a.k.a. wise women. The lovely church did that. So, there is something that will keep coming up, Libra, that trauma, that experience, where you were persecuted for your wisdom, for talking, for teaching, for knowing, for healing. And it, I, I feel like I'm tapping into some of you out there that have that inherent fear of speaking up and being yourself and truly express your knowledge. I've had that for years. Only in the past couple of years, I started to truly speak out the way I am. Um, it's a very paralyzing feeling. It's a terrifying feeling, um, especially for women and many times in love where they fear of expressing who they are to the man they're seeing or the person they're with um, because of fear of persecution. from past toxic masculinity. It's a big thing to deal with. Um, it's gonna come up this month. You will feel a little bit held back from speaking up. Speak up, Libra. If, if your voice shakes, if your hand shakes, if your heart breaks, speak up. We need to hear you. Two of Pentacles. And this card also feels like, oh, okay, and temperance. So this is juggling different energies and, ba and balancing them. So we're going back to ground zero. Finding your freedom within you from a place that harnesses the different polarities and the different energies and the different aspects of you. And instead of getting confused by it, finding balance. Okay? All of you is not a mess. All of you is a beautiful, abstract, inspiring painting. It works. It doesn't have to make sense. If it doesn't make sense to someone, they can go find their sense elsewhere. But some of you are tapping into some healing powers. I don't know if you do Reiki or some sort of energy work. Um, maybe you're contemplating if to start a business that is based on that go for it may will be the process the journey don't let doubts eat you okay
it's an injury that happened in a past lifetime or in this lifetime it's possible but somewhere geographically far away than, than where you're at right now uh, that is coming up I don't know if it's a visitor from that place or from that time I don't know if it's something you hear on the news um, something wakes up okay I mean really the dolphin and the horse can it get any better you're so gorgeous okay your freedom of unique expression and sense of self right dolphins like whales you know they communicate with solar energy it's like like telepathy there is some sort of telepathic communication between you and someone one from the earth element one from the water element doesn't have to be the sign that is an earth and or water I mean like the way these these entities um, express themselves one is very clear um, earthy communication and the other is more like telepathic um, artistic and they just get each other this is someone very special and you two just seem to really understand one another um, and really encourage each other's freedom and self-expression and unique attributes and you see the beauty in each other and I feel like both of you could have been uh, people who have been judged for your expression or for unique um, unique unique self and, and you, you see each other you see like the song uh, coming up to my mind I see your true colors I see your true colors na, na, na. I actually don't know all the lyrics but that <laughs> that part I see your true colors and it's just really liberating cool We'll dive into the love thing in the extended right now. I love you guys very much. If you have not subscribed yet, subscribe to my channel. If you're already subscribed, regardless, press the bell button to receive notifications. It's my birthday. Let me know you love me. Uh, I told you that I'm on Instagram and Twitter. Twitter thing is new. I have like four posts with no like because I don't even have any followers. <laughs> if you're a Twitter person, go there. Search for the existential shift. I feel like I feel like the kid with no friends over there. <laughs> um what else that's it guys thank you to my patrons i'll see you all in a second